Howdy, this video is on rate equations, also called rate laws. With a rate equation, the effect of the concentration of the reactants on the reaction rate can be determined. The rate equation can be used to help determine the mechanism of reaction, how a reaction actually occurs, which is necessary to know how to speed it up or slow down the reaction. And so after watching this video, given the rate equation, you should be able to determine how the rate changes when the concentration of the reactants are changed. Given the initial rates of the reaction with different initial concentrations, you should be able to determine the rate equation and the rate constant. You should be able to identify four factors that affect the reaction rate, and you should be able to identify three factors that affect the rate constant. So here we have this reaction, A plus B goes to C plus D, the lowercase are the coefficients in front, the uppercase indicate the species. And so we can immediately write down the rate equation, rate equals K, concentration of the reactants to some power, which has to be determined experimentally. And if you have a catalyst, that also has to be included. The rate is equal to the rate constant times the concentrations of reactants to some power. The exponents, that those powers, can be zero, one, two, can be a fraction, can be positive, or can be negative. That's why I say typically, the higher the concentration, the faster the reaction, because it's not always true. I mean, if you have a negative exponent, then the higher the concentration, the slower the reaction. Exponents, again, have to be determined experimentally. And so for this one, we see that the reaction is M order with respect to A, N order with respect to B. The sum of the exponents give you the overall order. And so if M was equal to one, then we'd say that was first order with respect to A. If N was two, then we'd say second order with respect to B. And so again, rate equation or rate law uses two terms interchangeably. You have the rate constant times the concentration of the reactants to some power and a catalyst if it's present. And again, those exponents have to be determined experimentally. And so again, please remember, you know the similarities and differences between kinetics and thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is all about what is the most stable. And so ecum constants, capital K, it's products over reactants. Coefficients become exponents. Pure solids, pure liquids are not included. For kinetics, we talk about the rate equation. The rate constant is lowercase k. Here, the exponents have to be determined experimentally. Pure solids, pure liquids are included in the rate equation. For kinetics, the higher temperature always means the faster the reaction. For equilibrium, for endothermic reactions, higher temperature means larger K. For exothermic reactions, higher temperature means smaller K. And so we've talked about four things that affect the reaction rates, concentration, physical state of reactants, temperature, presence of catalyst. And we have three things that affect the rate constant physical state reactants, temperature, and presence of the catalyst. So concentrations are in this rate equation explicitly, so these do not directly affect the rate constant. And so here's our rate law. If M equals one, then we'd say it's first order with respect to A. And now if we double A, and so two times A, that means doubling A, is to that first power. And so notice that the rate would be twice as fast. And so if A is doubled, then the rate doubles when the reaction is first order with respect to A. Now, if we triple A, then the rate triples. And so again, if it's first order and you triple the concentration, the rate should be three times as fast. Now here, M is equal to two, so it's second order with respect to A. Now, if we double A, and so both two and the concentration get squared, and so we get four, and so the rate will be four times as fast. And so if it's second order and you double the concentration, the rate will be four times as fast. Now, if we triple A, so both the three and the concentration get squared, then the rate will be nine times as fast. Now here we made M3, so that's third order with respect to A. If we double A, then the concentration in the two get cubed. And so two times two is four times two is eight. And so now the rate is eight times as fast. And so if you want to figure out what the exponent is, what you can do is change the concentration and then see how much faster it is. And so if you double the concentration and the rate becomes eight times as fast, that means it must be third order, order with respect to A. Now, if we triple the concentration and it's third order, three times three is nine times three is 27, it's going to be 27 times as fast. And so here we have the rate law is equal to K times concentration of A to zero power times concentration of B to N power. And so we'd say it's zero order with respect to A. And so what happens to the rate if we double it? And so two to the power of zero would be one. And so the rate would not change. Now, if it's first order and we double the concentration two to the power of one is two, it would be twice as fast. 
if it's second order with respect to A and we double the concentration, that's going to be four times as fast, two to the power of two. And if it's third order with respect to A and we double the concentration, then it's going to be two to the power of three, gives you two times two is four times two is eight. It will be eight times as fast. And so you should be able to go from how the concentration changed, the rate law, to how the rate will change. And so again, if you double the concentration at zero order, the rate will not change. Double the concentration at its first order, the rate will be twice as fast. Double the concentration and its second order, the rate will be four times as fast. Double the concentration and its third order, then the rate will be eight times as fast. What order must be the reaction relative to A if the concentration is doubled and the rate's changed? So if the rate did not change, then it must be zero order with respect to A. If the concentration was doubled, and the rate is two times as fast, well, that means it must be first order with respect to A. If the concentration was doubled and the rate's now four times as fast, then it tells you it must be second order with respect to A. If the concentration was doubled and the rate is eight times as fast, then it tells you it must be third order with respect to A. And so you should be able to go from the change in concentration rate law to how the rate changes. You should also be able to go from change in concentration to how the rate changes to the rate law. So what order must be the reaction relative to A? If the concentration is tripled, no change, and so that would be zero order. If the concentration is tripled and the rate's three times as fast, then that would be first order. If the concentration is tripled and it's nine times as fast, that would be second order. If the concentration tripled and it's 27 times as fast, then that would be third order with respect to A. And so again, you should be able to go from here to here to here or from change in concentration, change in rate, to the rate law. So which of the following is a rate expression for a reaction that is second order in A and third or order overall? And so for that first one, that's going to be second order with respect to A. That's second order with respect to A. The third one is third order with respect to A. And then that's second order with respect to A. Now remember, the overall order is just the sum of the exponents. And so for this one, you have two plus one, that'd be third order overall. This would be two minus one, so that's first order overall. This is third order overall, and this would be second order overall. And so second order respect to A, third order overall would be that first one. What is the overall order of the reaction for the following rate? And so remember, if this is in the bottom, it's the same as B to the minus a half. And so you add the exponent, so two minus a half, that gives you 1.5. And so you can have order of the reaction relative to a specific reactant, and you can also have the or order overall, which is a sub of those exponents. And so we could be asked, what is the rate law for the following reaction? And so immediately we can write down rate equals K times concentration of the reactants. And so we only have one reactant here. And now we have to figure that exponent out experimentally. Now this table, we have experiment, the initial concentration, that's what that little zero stands for, of the NO2, and the initial rate of the reaction. And so for experiments, the initial concentration was changed. And so if we look at it, going from this first to this experiment to the second experiment, concentration was doubled, and the rate went up by a factor of four. It's a four times faster now. And so that should tell us that second order with respect to our reactant. We can look at another one. So what is the rate law for the following reaction? And so again, immediately we can write down rate equals K times the concentration to the sum power. And again, for rate laws, we always have to determine those exponents experimentally. Remember for equilibrium, it's always just the coefficient. And so now if we look at our data, we have four experiments again, uh, four initial concentrations, four initial rates. And so going from one to two, the concentration is doubled, the rate doubles. And so that would tell us it's first order with respect to that reactant. If we look at experiments two and four, concentration double, rate doubles. And so again, first order with respect to that reactant. For first order, you actually don't put that one, it's just written that way. So what is the value of the rate constant? So we already figured out the rate law is this, the rate constant's the K. And so we just have to solve for K. So if we divide both by the concentration of N2O, we get that. Now, ideally what we do is we would K for all four experiments and then we take the average. 
And so the rate over the concentration, 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.1, that would give us 0 0.1 per second. For experiment two, we have 0 0.02 divided by 0 0.2 gives a 0 0.01. And so our rate constant is 0.1. Now this reaction is a little bit more complex. Now we have two reactants. And again, if we're asked about the rate law, we can immediately write down rate equals K that causes the concentration of the reactants. And then we just have to figure out the exponents. Now for this one, because we got two reactants, what we have to do is we'll look at one when the other one's constant. So if we look at experiment one and two, this one doubles, this is constant, and this doubles. And so that tells us this reaction should be first order with respect to this reactant. Now we have to figure out the order relative to the chlorine. And so between uh, two and three, so experiment two to experiment three, this is constant. This increases by factor four, or this is four times more. And so the rate is twice as much. And so four to the power of a half is a two. And so this tells us that this is half order with respect to the chlorine. And so this is our final rate law. So it's first order with respect to this reactant, half order with respect to the chlorine, and the overall order of the reaction is 1.5. Now if we want the rate constant, again, all we do is take our rate law, we solve for K. And so K is equal to the rate divided by this, don't forget your exponent. And so if we look at that first experiment, we have the rate is 0 0.01 divided by one times one to the half. And so that gives us 0 0.01. And so if we have a reaction, we can write down the rate law. It's going to be equal to the rate constant times concentration of the reactants to some power. These exponents have to be determined experimentally. If there's a catalyst, it also has to be included. Now, the way we get these exponents is we can look at how the rate changes when you change the initial concentration. And so for this case, the initial concentration was doubled, initial rate doubles, and so that means it's going to be first order with respect to that one. But again, please remember, exponents have to be determined experimentally. I hope that helps.